Okay, hello Cloud Gurus, how y'all doing? I'm Scott Pletcher, and I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for you meddling kids. I am absolutely thrilled that you've joined me for episode number three of our series, Deep Racer, The Fast and the Curious. In this episode, we're gonna get into the training process, and I'll share with you some reward functions, including the one that earned me this shiny ego booster right here. Oh, you wanna see more photos of me and the trophy? Cue that beautiful trophy footage. Okay, it's time to get to work. Our little racer is not going to train itself. Now, as we learned in previous episodes, we must train our deep racer, creating something called a policy. Now, that policy is then loaded on board the vehicle and helps it decide how to maneuver around the track. Now, when trying to wrap our brains around the deep racer training process, it's helpful to look at something called the Markov decision process. Now, it's a framework named after this Russian math dude, and it can help us make sense of all the parts and pieces of reinforcement learning. Now in the Markov decision process, we have something called an agent. Now in our case, it's the car. We have the environment, which is the track. We have a state, which is our current position and status of the car. And we have an observation, which is the view from the onboard camera. We have an action, our car can steer or just speed. And finally, we have reward, which really drives the reinforcement learning process. The deep racer training process consists of the agent trying different actions in the environment given the state and observations all with the objective of maximizing reward. Now we as trainers can influence this training process a few different ways. In the reward function, we can control the actions, and we can also adjust the hyperparameters. Today, we're gonna to focus on the reward function. The reward function for Deep Racer is a snippet of code that's called with every training step or action. The function provides us with some input parameters representing the state and observations, and we can set the reward as the output parameter. Now, using the inputs, we can build logic that rewards certain behavior, like staying near the middle of the track or going fast. And through iterations, the model wants to maximize reward so it'll learn to associate a given series of actions with the high reward, hence reinforcement learning. Ah, uh, I still remember my first reward function. Seems like it was just yesterday. When we drive down the road, we don't spend a whole lot of time looking at the side windows to try to worry about how far we are from the edge. Rather, we'll look down the road and identify a point in the distance and try to figure out how to get to that point. So I'm wondering if we can change the reward function of a robot to reward that sort of behavior. Now this concept was loosely based on an algorithm called Pure Pursuit from an academic paper written in 1992. Now among the parameters that are passed into the reward function are car location, car orientation, and the nearest waypoints. And my strategy was to reward the car for pointing to the next waypoint ahead on the track. And as an added bonus, it would tend to take a racing line into the curve. This model placed fourth in Santa Clara Summit. Not bad, but not good enough. And after thinking more on the problem, something occurred to me. I don't know what it is, but every time I get behind the wheel, I start thinking about Deep Racer and how I drive and how we might want it to drive. At one time, I was thinking about the pure pursuit method where we try to incentivize the car for following the waypoints based on how we drive. We, we look ahead and we identify the point where we want to go to and we drive to it. And I've been thinking about that and that seems more, more towards supervised learning than it is reinforcement learning. I mean sure we're reinforcing the car for following a set of waypoints but is that the best way around the track? One of the things we do know, just at least from physics, is there's an optimal way to take a corner. So I'm wondering if we change the strategy a bit to incentivize just getting around the track as fast and efficient as possible, rather than trying to give it these other 
external incentives? Is that going to allow the reinforcement learning processes to kick in? And maybe the car is going to self-identify the most efficient way to get around the track. This model is something that I call self-motivator, and it did quite well, placing eighth in Atlanta and first in Chicago. Now, before complaining to me that your attempts with this reward function do not deliver you an instant ticket to Vegas, keep this in mind. Just copying and pasting reward functions will not produce exactly the same results. Why is this? Well, in much machine learning and indeed reinforcement learning, there is a degree of randomness. Sometimes you'll hear this called entropy. And because of this randomness, your model may train and race very differently than my model. In fact, we'll talk about this entropy concept and other ways that we can influence the training process in later episodes. But for now, I challenge you to think about some different reward functions and strategies. And to get you started, I've made all my reward function iterations available on my GitHub repo. If you're enjoying this series and have an interest in learning more about machine learning, do be sure to check out our new course for the AWS Certified Machine Learning Specialty. Brock and I break things down with plain speak, plenty of examples, and killer labs to help you become the sage maker savant you always dreamed. So until next time, from the trophy and I, always be learning and keep being awesome, Cloud Gurus.